everybody. So this will be pretty much part two in regards to this Cobalt 80 volt max battery pack. This is one of my two battery packs I use with my Cobalt 80 volt string trimmer and leaf blower. So in my previous video I opened up this battery pack. Well actually I'd already uncased it but throughout the video I discovered that one of the cells in this pack this one right here actually vented so if you haven't watched that video yet feel free to check it out I'll put a card to it in the upper right corner that way you can go check it out or to be in the description something like that so more or less what happened was the other day I went to try to charge this pack and initially when I put it on the charger the charger blinked red I pulled it back off and tried again afterwards and then it began to charge it's not the first time my charger has done this it's done that a couple of times in the past I think even a couple of years ago it did it one time but never experienced any problems but this time around I put it back back on a charger and normally when this thing charges the indicator will animate like one two three one two three as it's taking a charge and of course here it is early or late spring first time I'm really using this thing since the fall of last year didn't quite remember that but here's the thing so the second time I put it on charger the charger itself would flash green like it was charging and a little fan inside the charger would run and the first green light would light up and never thought much of it so I went out cut my grass and I come back in and the charger was flashing red and then I pulled the uh, pack out and I smelled I smelled a chemical sweet smell. I'm like, oh boy, one of the cells must have leaked electrolyte. Well, that's what happened. This cell here, again, um, must have vented. I didn't hear anything. No burning smell. Nothing got hot to my knowledge. It just vented. Chances are, at the time, the cell probably got hot. But anyways, in this video, I'm going to talk about what I think went wrong what caused this battery pack to fail in the way that it did. So, right here is the management circuit on this whole pack. So this pack is 20 18650 cells in series to get 80 volts. It's roughly 4 times 20. So, 80 volts full charge, well probably more than that actually if the cells are at 4.2 volts, but 80 volts and every <clears throat> connection which all the nickel strips have been pulled off I pulled those off in the previous video but each nickel strip connection between let's say this cell and that cell or actually it was this way that cell that cell and this cell this cell so on and so forth each one had a wire connected to it that was soldered in that went back to this board that way this board can monitor every cell's voltage so theoretically, this board should have detected the air in its condition with this cell here. Because what happened was this cell must have went bad and it discharged to basically nothing more, more than likely. Whereas the rest of the cells were continuing to function just fine. But yet, this pack, I was, I was still able to measure the pack voltage with my multimeter and it was like, 72 volts or something like that or 70 volts and I would say that's probably the roughly the discharge voltage for the pack nor in, in normal cases now these cells the rest of the, the good ones measured roughly 3.7 3.8 volts so not quite discharged just yet my thing is this board failed to shut this pack down and it failed to completely lock out this ch um, charging, or excuse me, it failed to lock out charging altogether. Now I mentioned I did pop this pack onto the charger and it flashed red one time, but then it flashed green the other time. Who knows what the who knows what caused that? Um, maybe this cell's voltage briefly rose up to what was acceptable by this board. Again, not exactly certain, but what I think happened was. 
this cell went bad and it got over discharged or worse I think it actually got reverse charged and when you badly over discharge a lithium ion cell or reverse charge it it causes the copper on the anode to dissolve into the electrolyte and end up forming on I believe it's a cathode and you can get copper dendrites in there that pierce the separator and cause a short circuit this cell for example if I get my multimeter so I'll place this up on its side that way we can measure some cells we'll measure some good ones first now this is my first time measuring this pack since I made the last video so I mean, yeah, okay, you can actually see that alright so this cell for example 3.74 3.8 it's interesting there's a little bit of imbalance in there not nothing too significant but it's something that the um, it's something I believe the control board would be able to fix 3.8 okay here's the bad cell we'll switch our leads that way we won't have the negative there it's actually got 0.65 volts on it so it's it's got a little bit of it's got a little bit of something on it interestingly enough so it's hard to say if it's okay interesting how the longer I leave the leads on here well so it's actually got 0.5 volts on it in the previous video it had pretty much nothing on it so what I think happened with that cell is it was massively over discharged and you had some copper dendrites forming there and it caused a short circuit and therefore um, that short caused this battery when it was taking a charge more likely when it was taking a charge to overheat and vent now there was no burning smell no burning electronic smell nothing like that just a smell of a sweet chemical type solvent smell and that was more or less the electrolyte venting for this and still it's amazing how this cell has 0.6 volts on it <clears throat> which is I mean it's not much <clears throat> but it is a little it is interesting we'll say that so here here's my here's my thing so the protection circuit in this pack has two boards you have this main board here which has the bulk of all the electronics as well as the connectors for every cell junction to measure or to monitor the voltage of every cell as soon as I unclipped one of the uh, balance leads or the monitoring leads the BMS board completely shut down um, it stopped like for example even with this vented cell before I started cutting into this thing you could press this button here and it would actually show one bar but if you install this into let's say the leaf blower you could turn the leaf blower on you could press the power button and it would actually turn on but as soon as you squeeze the trigger it would beep at you because of the battery was low so this circuit in my opinion it failed to detect that this cell was massively over discharged I mean there's there's the possibility that it wasn't over discharged to begin with it could have just failed it's really hard to say but the odd behavior before smelling the chemical smell leads me to believe that this cell was probably over discharged to begin with um, and yeah, okay. So you had the secondary board here. This is the board that um, it has two things. Well, you can't see it now, but actually, no, it's still there. You have this fuse here. That's actually a fuse, big old piece of metal. Um, if you're, if you get a short circuit, that will blow. At least, hopefully. And there's also these two. Well, I think are MOSFETs. I'm thinking one of them switches on and off the circuit for the power connection, the, the power positive. And there's a second one here that switches on or off the connection for the charge positive. So this board here can switch on or off either of those. 
and in my opinion it should have shut this pack down completely like permanently locked it out as soon as it detected a problem now why I didn't do that is kind of beyond me another thing is okay lithium ion cells particularly 18650s they have two built-in safety features the first is what's called a PTC or more or less a polyfuse and what they do is if you overdraw the cell typically what you want to happen is for the PTC to operate it actually is like a resistor in a way when it gets hot its, re it's resistance skyrockets and therefore acts like a fuse it opens a circuit until the short circuit condition is removed or more or less it cools down and resets so that's the first method of protection that's built into 18650s not including the protection circuit that's external to the cell the second um, protection feature is what's called a CID or current interrupt device and it's operated based off of pressure of the cell so theoretically the pressure inside this cell when it gets super hot due to a short circuit it will increase the pressure and it will pop open a CID and I've have, I've seen cells harvested from laptop batteries have this actually um, tripped because the batteries will measure 0.00 volts and they have infinite resistance when measured with a multimeter and what the CID does is it opens the circuit to remove the short circuit condition to prevent the battery from venting okay so and here's and here's why this cell vented the short circuit had to have been internal to the pack or the cell excuse me um, so <clears throat> and another thing is if the cell was heating up and the pressure was increasing I would think the CID would have operated and actually opened this cell or must open the whole pack because they're all in series but that did not happen what ultimately happened was this cell vented and thankfully it did not vent with flame and I do believe these are IMR or INR type cells if it had been an ICR or lithium cobalt type cell there's a good chance it probably would have um, violently failed causing a fire but again because these are power tool cells they're either IMR or INR type cells it's a safer chemistry which helps lower the chances of catastrophic fiery failure so for example I'll show you one of my uh, Samsung cells I use on my cameras outdoors for QCOMP MDDX of course, they most of the time they, when they're stored during here. But um, it's an INR type cell, it's a 35E. Um, again, the safer chemistry. And some of the cells that I run for my cameras and my flashlights are ICR or lithium cobalt. And either I run those as basically one cell in series. And most of my cameras is 1S. My flashlights are 1S. Now the camera I'm filming with right now is actually a 2S. But I'm using the original um, circuit, the protection circuit from the original battery pack to actually protect these cells when they're in use in the camera. Okay everybody, so to wrap up this video, I'm going to show you a data sheet on these cells. So these are Sanyo 18650 cells. And I was pretty certain of that once I had uncased the uh, pack and saw the color of the cell wraps I mean Sanyo has this kinda reddish color typically on their cells and sometimes a totally random color on the uh, disc that's actually underneath this insulator disc so the thing about Sanyo cells is they can be very difficult to identify in the past I've harvested some from laptop batteries and the cell model oftentimes is like very like faintly printed on the cell wrap now we do have this identifying information here and in here we see RX near the end 
So I suspect these are Sanyo UR18650RX cells. And here's what I was able to locate on the internet about these. So there's the specs on the cell. It's roughly 2 amp hour 10C cells. So they have basically a 20 amp continuous discharge rate. Nominal voltage is 3.6 volts. Discharge in voltage is 2.5 volts. Charge voltage 4.2 volts. Max discharge in current 20 amps. So here's a little more detailed information on the cells. Again, Sanyo UR18650RX. Continuous discharge in current max 20 amps. It doesn't really say the surge um, discharge rate. Some cell data sheets will say that. Others like this don't seem to specify that. Zoom in a little bit here. So if we go down further, here is the data sheet from Panasonic, or at least the uh, charge curve characteristics, discharge characteristics. What's funny is this website here, this NKON, or NCON, however you want to pronounce that, um, they have this cell listed as a 30 amp discharge current cell. I'm going to assume it's 20 amps to be safe. I'm going to say these are probably IMR, maybe INR type cells. Uh, they were manufactured in 2017, at least these were. So, And I should note that the battery pack says made in China on it. See that or not? Yeah, made in China. However, I think the cells were made in Japan. Because, I mean, they're Panasonic or Sanyo. So, okay, imrbatteries.com has them here. $399 if you want to buy one new or it says they're sold out. And then here they have them as 20 amps. So, we're going to say they're 20 amp cells. Made by Sanyo. Unprotected, of course. Origin, origin Japan. Okay, and there's a data sheet. Page not found. Wonderful. I think I ran into this last time I was looking them up. So, anyways, um, that's going to wrap up for this video. So, what I might do in a future video, well, one thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to 3D print me a storage case for these because I'm going to store them separately from the rest of my cells since these are, these are in fact, high discharge rate cells. Good for perhaps maybe RC car or something like that. Or perhaps for higher capacity cells for maybe my cordless hand mixers or something like that. So I'm going to store these separately. And in a future video, what I might do is do some tests with them, test see how, how well these are working and stuff like that. So looks like I'll have 19 good cells out of this pack. And of course, we got the bad one over there, which I'll have to take off for recycling pretty soon. But anyways, again, wraps up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for watching this video from QCareer Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel. That's QCompMTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.